Hey guys, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome uh, to North Haven General Baptist Church uh, to our Friday devotions. Uh, my name is Pastor Braden, uh, and I'm excited to be able to be a part of this and getting these messages out every Friday. If you've been watching and you're a very astute person, you may have recognized that I'm wearing the same shirt as I was last week. Uh, that is because I'm doing these on the same day. I'm recording these on the same day. Uh, I have had the, the last uh, week off. Uh, so I want to make sure we got both these recordings out there so we can have devotion on both Fridays. So again, I'm glad to see you. And I want to thank Brother Ron for uh, stepping in uh, and filling the pulpit on Sunday morning and Sunday evening uh, and taking care of that. I know it was a great message. And if you missed it, please check it out uh, on Facebook or YouTube uh, for our uh, Sunday morning worship service this past Sunday, because uh, I know he did a great job. Today, I want to talk about uh, a specific a uh, person in the Bible. There's been, throughout my time reading scripture, there's been specific people in the Bible that have stood out to me for some reason, for one reason or another, uh, parts of their life have stood out to me. Uh, and so, uh, of course, the entire Bible is something that we need to cherish, we need to read, we need to learn, we need to understand, we need to focus on and carry with us throughout our lives. But there are specific people, specific stories that stand out. One of them is Paul. Paul, it, for those of you who come to our Sunday night services, you probably know by now. I love Paul. I love a lot of Paul's writings, the, the letters. We can learn so much for them. But more so, I love the story of Paul, where he used to be all the way up to the man he became. It's amazing, and it's all because of Jesus Christ. I think it's amazing. Anna, we talked about her uh, around Christmas time, and we talked about uh, her at the temple steps, uh, and she's somebody that I, I mentioned I would love to uh, talk to once I get to heaven to be able to ask her uh, or talk to her and find out what she all she said. We know just a brief snippet about what, what she did and what she said, and we see her briefly uh, in Scripture, but I would love to know more. The jailer, we'll be talking about him uh, this coming Sunday, the jailer that was uh, overseeing the prison where Paul and Silas were uh, when the the doors were opened and the chains uh, were uh, loosed and, and they were able to be set free, but they stayed. Uh, just the events of that night, what he went through, his, his story of that night, uh, I find fascinating. And, uh, you know, he's just so he's a very fascinating character for me. And then there's Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus is a different one for me. I, I very much enjoy Zacchaeus for a different reason. Excuse me. Uh, and that reason is for mainly his height. <laughs> we know that Zacchaeus, uh, if you go by the Sunday School song, he was a wee little man, right? He was a short guy. Um, and it's no secret that I myself am a short guy. I'm not the tallest one out there. <clears throat> And I come by it naturally. Uh, my whole family, my my uh, immediate family, uh, the uh, growing up, none of us reached past the point of five foot six in our lives, um, and, and a few never even got close to that. Uh, so uh, we're very used to it. We grew up in it, and so he's not a man of a very uh, tall stature, and so and many of our, my uh, friends and family who are for lack of a better term, vertically challenged, uh, would probably tell you that there's always these preconceived notions uh, about somebody, depending on their height. Uh, and it's it's something that uh, those of us who are short, we have to overcome. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to sow this sad story like it's a horrible thing to be short and all these things. There are many, many people out there um, that have to overcome much, much greater obstacles. I'm just pointing out that it is, it, this is something, being short, that you do, it does have its own obstacles that you, you do have to overcome for one reason or another. And most of us get to a certain point in our lives before we even reach adulthood that it's really not much of an obstacle anymore. We just kind of are used to it and don't have to worry about it. Uh, and uh, if, if you're like me, you know, you marry somebody taller. Uh, so so uh, in your home, you don't have to use a step stool. Uh, you can just ask your wife to reach things for you. Or for my case now, uh, my oldest son as well, who is also taller than me. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we face these different things. But you can even look through history and see that height has been a big deal 
um, for certain instances. We have, again, preconceived notions about people. You can even go back in Scripture and look at 1 Samuel chapter 9 when, when Saul was being um, uh, appointed by Samuel. Uh, and, and it was a factor enough to point out not only his good looks, but that Saul was a head taller than everyone else, as if that was an indicator that makes him a better king in some way. Uh, and, but just you look at these different things. So we have this short story in Luke chapter 19 of Jesus and this short man named Zacchaeus. And we don't have a whole lot of information about him other than he was short and the fact that he was the chief tax collector. Um, now, a little bit about tax collectors. They were not liked. People did not like tax collectors, and for very good reason. They collected money, taxes. You know, you didn't have IRS at that time. You didn't have TurboTax to get on the computer and, and take care of it for you or uh, H&R Block down the street to be able to help you with your taxes. Rather, uh, you had tax collectors that went out, and they collected your money, and they came out, and they told you how much you owed. And so you would give money to this tax collector. This tax collector would take that money, and they would give it to the Roman government who uh, the people did not like. And part of that money went towards funding the Roman soldiers who the people definitely did not like. They were fearful of them. They were cruel, the soldiers were. Uh, and so the people would despise these soldiers. And the money that the tax collectors brought in helped fund that. Not only that, but most of these tax collectors would not only take that money but they would take more than what they were supposed to get. And they would take that extra money and they would put it in their pocket. And that's how many of them would gain wealth. Zacchaeus was obviously good at his job because he had reached a point of being chief tax collector. And we see in that text in, in chapter 19 of the book of Luke that Zacchaeus was a wealthy man. Uh, so you don't get to that point of being wealthy and chief tax collector without having, uh, you know, some, some sort of... Uh, skill at your job uh, and so he was very good at it had some sort of power uh, that went along with his job now the average height of men at that time was somewhere in the uh, range of five foot five to five foot seven uh, based on the skeletons that have been found from people from that time and so we can know that Zacchaeus as we see knew that he would not be able to see Jesus who he knew was coming from standing within the crowd, which means he couldn't see not only above their heads, but around their heads to see them, which means he would be probably at least a head shorter than them. And they're standing somewhere between 5'5 five, five and 5'7, five, which would knock him down uh, in, you know, 5'5", five 5'2", five, somewhere in there, uh, or shorter. We have no idea. But it shows that he was at least down to 5'2", I would say, uh, just just by that knowledge right there. So he knew Jesus was coming to town. And this is a man who lived a not good life. We can see the indications that he stole money and did these things. And he lived not a good life. And that's not the part we want to focus on because that's not really the part that Luke focused on. That's not the story of Zacchaeus' life that Luke wanted us to hear. Rather, Luke wanted us to hear this next part. So Zacchaeus at that point in time was curious enough or knew enough about Jesus that he felt it was important that he see him. So he ran this rich, somewhat powerful, despised man ran. He didn't walk. He ran ahead of the crowd to make sure he was up front to be able to get to this tree and climb up into this tree to get high enough to be able to see above the crowd so he could see Jesus Christ. I find it amazing. I find it amazing that he was willing to do so, willing to get ahead just to see this man. He wasn't there to throw things at him. He wasn't there to mock him. He was there just to see him. And when Jesus got to the point where he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus up there, he not only called him, he called him by name. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house today. I would have come to your house, which was a which was an honor then for Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus at that point we could tell we knew or we know that he knew who Jesus was because what was the first thing he said he said Lord Lord he calls Jesus Lord knowing who he was 
And so then we go further and we see at that point, his heart must have changed. He believed in his heart much, must have changed because then at that point, he made a commitment. He said, Lord, I will give half of my possessions to the poor because he recognized that they were a need uh, for, for what he had. And not only that, going above that half that he gave, he said, I will pay back those who I cheated. But he didn't just pay them back what he cheated from them. He said, I will pay back four times what I had taken from them. At this point, his life, his heart, everything changed and he made a commitment to God. And for that, he was rewarded salvation. If we can make that commitment to God, not, not a commitment necessarily to give half our possessions, but just make a commitment to him, believe in him, and commit to following him, we are awarded salvation as well. Are you ready? Are you willing to run ahead to see Christ? Are you ready and willing to run ahead to catch a glimpse, to call him Lord? And to receive that invitation from him to sit down at the table with Christ. Because that's what he offers every single one of us. We can go with him today. If you're curious about that, seek us out. Contact us. You're going to hear our voiceover in just a second that shows how to get a hold of us. I would love to hear from you and love to share with you more about Jesus Christ. Uh, again, I thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I encourage you to check out more videos here on our YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about Christ or more about our church, please check us out on our website, NorthHavenGB.com.